mm, you become too hot. Mm. OK, um, we'll get started. I just want to read from, um, just share a thought from John chapter 4, verse 20, verse 24, so it's 23, right? John 4, 23. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Right? We've read this right from the first semester many times. Um, the hour is coming, and now is the true worshippers, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. So um, the Lord Jesus having this conversation with the woman at the well, and he teaches some very important um, aspect of worship, right? Um, that we need to worship in spirit and in truth. Truth meaning um, without any hypocrisy, without any pretense, um, and according to the word as prescribed in the word, because the word is truth. And also, he says that you worship in spirit, right? Out of your innermost being, uh, out of your spirit. So, which means that our worship is not to be superficial, but um, really. It, it ought to be a communion, a deep communion, right? So um, for, for our worship to be of a deep communion or our conversations with God, our interactions with God, our dealings with God to be of something that is deep and not superficial, it has to be of truth, right? It has to be of truth. I was just thinking, you know, when we get to a, when we go to any gathering, get together, people are generally talking and they say, okay, hi, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine. It's a very lot of superficial talk. And my daughter was asking me just yesterday, you know, uh, is it fake? You know, is it all this conversation? You know, is it really fake? I said, no, it's just superficial. Uh, and it can go deeper. Right? It can go deeper. How? When you ask a question um, and when you and the other person answers truthfully, right? Uh, it can go deeper. Or when you take time to get to know, when you take time to be with the person, it can go deeper. Right? So I was just thinking, you know, our worship and our prayer and our walk with God can go much deeper. And one aspect or one important characteristic of going deeper is truth. Right? Like um, just, just the other day, a person was saying that... Um, he uh, he knows he knows what what of God expects you know what God expects in terms of you know his relationship. He's a working professional and uh, you know he's interested in a in a girl, and the girl is not a believer. Okay, so somebody was sharing, telling him, "Hey, you know that's that's not the right thing. That's not the done thing. You know the word. You know God has led you so far." elevated you to this position professionally. You know everything there is to know. You are in a good place. You are in a strong place. And they said, uh, yeah, I know. But still, I'm, you know, uh, I think I will go ahead with this. So, so that is something that is not of truth. And many times in our dealings with God, sometimes we, many times we deal like that, right? God, I know this is the truth, but uh, I'm going to do this anyway, right? I'm going to do this. I, I know this is the truth. I know this is what is expected, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go. And uh, that is not walking in truth, or that is not worshiping in spirit. That is not what God really wants from us. You know? Our walk with God can be so much deeper and so much, uh, I would say, you know, so much enriching if we would interact in truth with God and say, Lord, I know, you know what I'm saying, what I'm doing um, uh, is, if it's not of truth to say truth, to say honestly, sincerely say, Lord, I know this is, this is what it is. Right? And our walk can be so much deeper, so much, um, uh, you know, um, so much, you know, it will be, um, we will do away with all the flakiness, with all the superficiality, 
right? Okay. So let's pray. Let's just say, Lord, um, um, you know, I want our, want our, I want my walk to be like that. Uh, the psalmist says, Lord, you desire truth in our innermost being, innermost being. And so maybe be people who who desire the same thing, right? saying, Lord, let truth be found in us, um, and Lord, let our walk with you be deeper and not superficial. Father God, we even as we come before you, Lord, Master, that's our heart's cry, Lord, that we will be people whom you seek. We will be worshippers whom you seek. For the Father is seeking such who will worship in spirit and in truth. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, in all our walk with you, in our conversations with you, prayer, worship, Lord, everything that happens, God, Lord, let it be from a place of truth. Lord, let it be from a deep place of intimacy, God. And yes, Lord, we know that um, you've called us, invited us to this place. And uh, that requires, Lord, truth in all areas of our lives, Lord. And I just pray today that uh, let there be a consecration, let there be a refining, Lord, let there be a breaking away and let there be an establishing in our own lives, Lord, even as we desire to, um, to live in truth, God. And uh, yes, we are because you are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' matchless name. We pray, Amen. Amen. Okay, somebody can do a word study in truth. <laughs> That'll be a very philosophical, uh, you know, deep study. I think. Okay, so uh, yeah, questions on the assignment. Um, see, uh, I, I see quite a few people who have uh, uploaded the titles. Right. Let me uh, just share that. Um, so, anyone missing out on this who have not shared the title, um, please go ahead and do that, right? Uh, let me just share that page. Okay, so, can I see the page? Okay, so we have, okay, Rinchan, Sri Radha, Nina, Francis, Nikhil, Prince, Anand, Shira, Nina, Sean. Sean is also, also put okay. in the class. No, he's not in the class, but uh, yeah, he's filled in. Yes. Um, anyone else uh, who has to, you know, please go ahead and uh, you know where to find the sheet, right, in your classwork section, and um, you can fill that in. And also the other word doc, um, which you can enter your. Um, uh, assignment, yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Uh, you're talking about the Excel sheet or the um, one second, correct, correct. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think that'll be better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, I thought you can actually add add it. Um, oh, I see. I see. No, I didn't want that. Uh, so what do I do? What do I? Okay. Correct. Okay, okay. Uh, can you just use the mic and just explain it so online students also can? Um. Uh, sir, instead of doing in this word study Google Doc, okay. there is a assigned work. Okay, let me just uh, yeah. The, let me just uh, share that screen. Yeah. Or maybe you can share and explain. You can share screen. Explain that. Okay, this is for all the online students and the uh, in-person class. Uh, E-learning students, you can, you know, you can, you can just uh, get your word study done on a word doc, and you can put it, paste it, 
in the discussion page right okay so Pastor, is it sharing? Yeah. yeah go ahead um uh so uh i said we can add from here uh your work is there right Assign. yeah yeah so we can add or create and then we if, if we didn't google documents you just click on doc and then it will get the link so or else uh you can do do it from here if you open this yeah you can do it from here or else if you did uh, I, I think that's fine see we can do a yeah. go there do an add or create yeah and then um, just add that and then it will come. okay that's fine in. that's what i'm saying see uh, there is an uh, there is another option add or create and then google drive and then link or then file so if you did in uh, where you actually did you can copy paste it right yeah you can do that Okay, so online students, um, I hope you it's clear. Okay, so we can do this. So you have time till ten tonight to do it, right? Okay. Okay, so let's um, let's continue. So um, so we saw that uh, we um, we have several ways to study the word, right? Um, just to reiterate, word study, and that's the, what the assignment is on. Topical study, it's about the theme. It's about a topic. Uh, character study is about a Bible character that we pick up, choose, and we do a study. Um, book study is about, obviously, uh, as the word um, uh, refers, it's it's the book, and it'll be a verse by verse study. And what is interesting is in a book study, we would be doing you know word topical character, we'd be referencing all that, right? Uh, inductive study. We, we we saw that how we ask all these questions uh, when we go through you know it's a, it's a, uh, where we go from the specific and go on to the general so that's what the word inductive means we uh, go deeper with every verse and then uh, see what the applications are right general applications are okay so uh, yeah you had uh, Prince you had a question about the uh, sorted no oh is it Okay, 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 fine. Okay, so let's look at, um, you know, as we uh, do this study, um, a little bit of hermeneutics, you know, what if there is a passage which has a problem uh, with the, you know, which, which has a seemingly contradictory message within the passage itself? Okay, so how do we, how do we approach it? How do we, uh, you know, how do we sort it? Um, and how do we apply it? You know, because that's very important, right? So, okay, so, so here's something that uh, Gary and Dennis, you know, to uh, scholars, they are actually, uh, sub, uh, you know, kind of suggesting this. Let's go through that. Okay, the first one is to identify the problem in the passage, right? Now, what does the passage uh, say, and what is the problem there? And see what are the opposing views or contradictory views. Okay, so uh, I was just thinking maybe we can look at. Um, Let's say one Corinthians twelve or one Corinthians fourteen, okay. Where, um, yeah, let's turn to one Corinthians fourteen. So one Corinthians fourteen, we uh, we see this uh, towards the end of the passage. Everything seems to be going fine, right? Paul is preaching. I mean, teaching about what should be done in church, and then suddenly, verse thirty-four. Okay. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And uh, if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. Okay, so it's like, um, yeah. with every word, it seems to be like, uh, oh, why is he saying that? You know, and uh, so. So the thing is, okay, let's let's look at this. Okay, so what is the problem in the passage? If you if you take the first step, okay, um, what seems to be the problem? Right when we right from 12, 13, 14, we are reading, Paul is talking about the gifts, how the gifts should be used uh, in the church, and so on. And he's talking about, okay, this is how you need to prophesy. This is how tongues need to be used, etc. So it's He's addressing the whole congregation, and suddenly, you know, this 
uh, this thing about women to be silent in church. So, um, so that's the those are the two opposing views, right? One is okay, everybody pray like this, everybody prophecy like this. These are the gifts which are there, and then so those are the two opposing views. Like suddenly, why one particular section in the congregation to keep quiet? So. Does that mean that the whole thing about prophesying and praying in tongues and interpretation of tongues, you know, does it mean or does it kind of cancel all that? Okay, that's the question which comes up, right? Okay, so um, so second second thing. Okay, so those are the two opposing views. Okay, so we are cl clear in our mind. Okay, these seems to be, you know, uh, two two opposing or contradictory things. Okay, uh, second step is list the realistic alternative interpretations. Uh, the unrealistic interpretation would be, or the extreme interpretation would be, sorry? Yeah, so prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, you know, all these gifts not applicable for women. Okay, that's the other extreme case. So, okay, we will omit that. So, what is the alternative interpretation? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So when you look at this, what could be, you know, in your own mind, what could be the possible uh, yeah, uh, or alternative, you know, inter uh -huh. yeah, so what could be the alternative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what could be, yeah, you can, you can use, yeah. When we see this context, uh, like uh, he is talking about women, but it's not about being silent uh, in everything. So they were actually the context is they were asking their husbands. They couldn't understand and well, they are asking their husband what is actually he's saying. Like they are asking for the explanation to their husbands. Right. So that's why Paul said you be silent in the okay. church. That's okay. actually the context. Yeah. So that's that's one alternative. He's saying that uh, you know verse thirty five. You know if they want to learn something, so. One alternative could be there's an interruption interruption here because there's a small discussion going on. You know they are interrupting proceedings and uh, they are asking questions and it's interrupting with the flow of things. So saying that, okay, let them ask the questions on uh, to their own husbands uh, at home. Okay, that is one. What what other thing could be there? Uh, I feel like um, Paul is like um, like these people, uh, these women, especially in the church. I think they uh, they like just um, they don't think before they speak. Like they just um, like burst out like between maybe sermons or something. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, respect the others like who are there. So mm -hmm. you might be calling for order in the church, like to wait and to so. Um... Why do you say that? They don't respect or... Um. It says in verse 34, uh, let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak. Mm. Um, but they are to be submissive as the law also says. So it mm. shows that they were not being submissive, right? They are not being uh, so, that okay. not so that's a possibility, yeah. Mm. So there's which means that these are like I don't know, some very vociferous allowed, you know, uh, uh, opposing views or whatever, but uh, it comes from a place of not from a place of submission, but from a place of you know, uh, I won't say the I won't use the word rebellion, but you know, maybe it came from a place like you know, from that place. Mm. 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 Yeah. So, me, is that an alternative? You know, is mm, is that a cultural thing that Paul is referring to? Okay. So, these are some alternatives. Uh, 
uh, include you know the, the extreme alternative being that it is only for you know men and not for women okay so these are you, you want to share something prince uh, yeah. uh, i think they were talking too much uh, when they are having someone maybe they are cross questioning the pastor who was preaching mm. yeah yeah so they are talking with each other discussing suddenly and then yeah so these are these are you know definitely possible scenarios and um, and also you know if you look at that word uh, which he uses um, to you know in verse 34 he says right for it is not permitted unto them to uh, uh, it is shameful for them to speak right and the word he used there is leleo okay in the greek there are two words which normally they use for speaking and i think one is lego and lelio okay lego is word which is uh, which is like a uh, you know building upon line upon line kind of a uh, speech you know where where your it's a logical reasonable kind of a speech and lelio is more like a you're uttering something and you're uh, you're again you're communicating something you're communicating an idea but it is to burst out it is to you know you're just speaking your mind and you know it's like that so there's a uh two different words lego and leleo okay so here here he is using that word uh, leleo and not lego okay so that's that's also something to keep in mind okay okay um so let's uh, let's look at the next one okay write down the thought development of the entire book okay that's a third step if the book is short with uh, you know if the book is short if it's a lengthy one then you write about the thought developments of the uh, the previous two chapters so let's uh, you know if we if you were to look at chapter 12 onwards okay what is the what is the emphasis here that about spiritual gifts paul's emphasis is that one should not be ignorant one should know right um and uh, his emphasis is you know as he talks about these gifts he talks about how one should utilize these gifts right he's saying these gifts are expression of the holy spirit he's saying that it it is to edify the body right all that and with that in mind he's saying okay this is the right way to use these gifts and that's the you know that's the whole uh, thought uh, of focus of this this particular you know this topic right so we see that okay and uh, also certain things that we can look at is uh, historical background of the book okay so historical background you look at uh, the corinthian church uh, you see that they are spiritually gifted church right paul himself says you know you come short and no gift um they are spiritually gifted church um and therefore he had to actually write to them to say okay this is the right way to use these gifts so we know that and and also it was a church which was carnal in the sense they there was a lot of division and strife okay, this was a church which was saying okay um you know we are of paul you know we are team paul we are team apollos we are teams uh, peter and all that so this was also a carnal strife filled church there were lawsuits um there were also you know uh, carnality like sexual sin and so on so it on one side it was a very spiritually um uh, uh, spiritually uh, a church that was moving in the spiritual gifts uh, on the other side it was also a carnal church so we we see all that also you know we consider that okay um we can do key words and word studies <clears throat> for some of the you know it, it words that is like this you know why when he's saying speak when he's doing when he's using the word uh, let the women keep silent you know you can do a study of the word study of the greek and 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 see what is the exact meaning right what is paul meaning when he when he uh, using these words right okay um so check the uses of the words in the same book okay so do we see paul using these words in the same book in the same passage keep silent that's the instruction right keep silent yeah. so yeah so you, you know if you look at um, let's say see he himself says um
Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's just go down to, or uh, uh, just back up from there to um, verse twenty-eight. Okay, verse twenty-eight is talking about tongues and interpretation, right? If anyone's verse twenty-seven, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at the most, two at uh, the most three, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church. Okay, so he uses the same. It's you know like women keep silent. So here he's saying, let them keep silent in church, okay, and uh, let the prophet speak and let uh, others judge. Any other place? Verse thirty. Ah, if uh, anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent in church. So um, he is giving this instruction about keeping silent to a few other people also. It's not just the women, right? So in the usage of the gift, in the usage of tongues and interpretations, in the usage of prophecy, he's saying, you know, he's saying, okay, you need to keep silent. And it's a conditional, you know, conditional thing in the sense, if this is happening, please keep silent. Or so we see that it is, it is for a time, right? It is, it is not a blanket thing. It is for a time. Uh, let your, you know, if there is no interpretation, please keep silent. If uh, prophecy also, uh, you know, if if there is um, no no nothing revealed, let the other person keep silent. Okay, so we see that that there are uses of this word in the passage. Okay, so it's not just an exclusive thing that he uses there. Uh, we see the usage of this, and sorry. Context is different, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, we know the context is different. You know, it's about uh, some discussions, questions, etc. So, so, which means that um, he's not referring to women not praying in tongues and interpretation, interpreting. It's not referring to women prophesying when something is revealed. Uh, he's not. He's not referring to that. But he's referring to this particular context of, you know, this interruption, maybe disruption, or maybe some questions that are, you know, in, in the way in which it is asked, um, etc. Right. So we know that because when we turn to, uh, let's say, chapter eleven. Okay, so in the chapter 11, he's talking about praying, prophesying. He's actually talking about the head coverings, okay? Um, but when we go down to verse 5, he says, But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors. Okay, but uh, I'm not talking about head covering. <laughs> but, you know, look at that. Verse 5, he says, Every woman who prays or prophesies. So definitely it's in this yeah, sorry. Yeah, so women are praying, women are prophesying. So it's not that they are to keep silent in that sense, right? So, so that is sorted. So we know that. Okay, so when we consider all these alternatives, and I mean, we see this word being used in the same book multiple times, we realize that hey, it's, he's using it in all these places, which includes women. So it is he's not referring to the gifts that women should not use these gifts or women should not move in these gifts or women should not pray women should not prophesy you know prophesy who do you prophesy you know collectively you do it in a group you know or one on one but so he's not referring to that so he's referring to the the women in that church culturally who were disrupting maybe who were um, asking things who were uh, you know like he says lelio which could be uh, you know just uh, spontaneous chatter that could be happening, and he's saying, you know, let them ask their husbands in, in the church, uh, in their own homes. Okay. Additionally, uh, we can also, you know, look, uh, if you look at the notes, you can also look at, um, um, you know, how are these words used in the rest of the New Testament? If you want to do a study, um, if there's a concordance, right? You can see, uh, okay, are there any notes in the Bible? Uh, anything? Any explanations given? Now. 
when it comes to commentaries and explanations you need to be a little careful okay because uh, not all people all scholars all theologians uh, are subscribing to a like a spirit filled kind of a background like some of them are cessationists saying it ended so they might say okay they might not even go into it they might say okay this is of the new testament i mean uh, church it's not applicable to us so let's not even get into it okay so we need to be a little careful there okay when we are reading commentaries okay okay so what would be the application for the original audience okay the original audience meaning the corinthian church the application is exactly what he is written you know so that uh, they go back they they ask they don't disrupt there's no spontaneous chapter I mean, chatter happening when the church um, you know there's gathering for prayer and uh, uh, considering study of the word etc how would i apply for the global church now okay so that's another question right so how would do how would we apply it so do we apply it and say women keep silent because there are a lot of churches who are doing that right saying that okay this is what it is women keep silent and um, yeah so we're missing out on the prophetic i mean all the other gifts every gift um where the lord really wants the entire body of christ to function to thrive to flourish and we miss out just because we cut out right and um, yeah and that's changing like right? that's slowly changing the revelation people are catching on so praise god for that so don't miss supply right and in our own personal life and ministry so this is what it is you know culturally we could be in a place where like anand is saying um where i, I know we've been in homes where <clears throat> the women are not eating you know this is like christian homes um yeah, and people are special i mean like leaders in church and all is we're, we're sitting and then uh, they're saying the women are not eating i'm like shocked you know why don't you all say no no we'll be eat later uh, no the, the food is hot you know why don't we all sit and eat then i realized okay we can't really push you know it's a thing they were like no you will eat we will serve and it might you know it could happen that way so uh, so that is harmless uh, that is fine okay but when it comes to uh, matters inside you know in when it comes to ministering uh, ministering the word or you know if we take the same thing in right and i think this head covering is a big thing right uh, i've seen been a men on mission uh wearing sandals in the church uh, saying it's a holy place so leave it out but what what about uh, the holy spirit is indwelling so where do i escape <laughs> you know <laughs> everywhere i need to go with my feet uh, you know um i understand okay talking about the manifest presence of god the tangible presence of god and you know and you know where it is coming from but when it's taught as a legal requirement uh then it becomes a problem you know for holiness this is what it is same we've been in you know web mission strips and you know over to take a group picture and this guy is saying you know head covering head covering he's telling the women you know, put it put it on and uh, yeah we kind of noticed that so I said fine you know and so, and so in such places even our women who go and teach pastors who go and teach they just were you know why create a unnecessary you know uh, tension uh, so just as it is it's difficult for them to accept that the lady is teaching okay uh, so you go with the head uncovered it's even more you know it's like totally so it's fine we just wear that and uh, teach and yeah are we not reinforcing the thing no huh? uh, yeah so we need to so we need to have the discussion uh with them right so we need to have the discussion with them but uh we need to arrive at that place now having the discussion with them and uh, you're right exactly 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 sorry we can't tell we can't tell Hmm. so it, the, it's i mean worshiping god is all about us and our heart 
it's not about the culture so when we this bindi also this came a big issue mm-hmm. so what they were telling is it's it's not about the culture we'll respect our culture being in india as an indian we respect our culture and we'll worship god mm. god won't see if you kept a bindi or <laughs> head covering or yeah uh you you have a point there but at the same time if culture interferes you need to know the truth okay so there's a fine line especially in our country in our nation there's a fine line between uh, because a challenge is like this where truth and culture are so intertwined okay so there's a fine line you need to be able to separate okay this is truth and this is culture so if you're going to teach something as something that is of culture as the truth right so this is what is expected this is the truth that is where we have a issue it will become a problem where it is it becomes more of a legalistic uh, thing rather than so anything that is legalistic and anything that is uh, you know off man ways of man if it is it it can be a little uh, what i would say it, it can be uh, it no it will not lead to freedom rather than you know because the, the truth always liberates a person right um but so it will just bring people into bondage rather than truth so so certain things can be cultural it it need not interfere with the truth uh and we can just go ahead what we need to have the understanding we need to teach the understanding right saying hey this is what god expects if you are doing this you know like uh culturally it's fine but we really need to know the know the truth of what it is right the uh, truth and the culture hmm like am i correct yeah we need we, we need yeah not we... interconnect culture and the truth yeah if we interconnect and there will be so many problems yeah so which so how will you you know as a pastor how will you how will you teach that yeah that's the thing like when you you were talking about bindi now that's another big issue right but bindi what does bindi actually re- refer to we need to know that right it's refers to the third eye of shiva and uh, so that is what your your that is one aspect of it then the other thing is your your having your allegiance to it right so all that is there but it is we know it is also a cos- cosmetic thing right in culture people who are wearing don't know all those all those things no they are not talking about third eye of shiva it's just a cosmetic thing for them and people wear it and we know from certain cultures like taking off the bindi means exactly may know or i don't know you may not know so there is a pa- I... and this uh, then we go to uh, east the basket okay and then you should cover uh, that mm and then we'll we'll then mm then you come to the house and she speak okay so we bring one sorry we bring one I see. And we want to just go over this. And because we are respecting our Indian culture, we are respecting. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So, so that. Yeah. So it's a it's a fine line. We need to understand that. We need to know what the truth is, and uh, we need to. Um, yeah, we need to apply the truth in that particular setting, accordingly. So we are not going against the truth. we are not compromising in the truth you know according to different people we are not doing that uh, as long as you are clear in that right that's, that's, so that's the, that's the thing um, yeah so see not everybody who's putting a cosmetic is bowing down or worshiping uh, a deity you know we're not saying that they are doing that 
um so so it's that see but uh, you know as a as a believer let's say a person goes and share or takes up the mic and preaches the word and if you see on big bindi there it's going to be a problem to a typical christian audience yes or no yeah it's going to be a problem <laughs> and they might say wow yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah some of the churches will have an issue with that a church which is broad minded and say okay which just has an understanding would say fantastic you know here's a witness same you know if i'm dressed like if i have a just like a mulla with that thing and all then I, i come and say praise the lord it's like everybody get excited right so and you know the truth we will we'll, we'll go into the freedom we'll get the freedom you are talking about only spiritually or or worldly also so what my point is when we when we when we are talking about this freedom if you know the truth if you get into the truth mm-hmm. we got we'll get this freedom yeah so that's what uh, uh, this uh, evangelist from uh, you um, i mean other countries came into india they did all these things in your uh, religions and all there will be discrimination and all mm-hmm. but when we see now but we know that we got the freedom yeah. when we see now present life but worldly in our country or in our place we are not free we don't have pre- freedom to to worship god we are being discriminated by uh, other religions mm-hmm. because uh, uh, india is a hindu country yeah so uh, how so do- what kind of freedom are we talking about oh, yeah. right okay so first and foremost it's it's freedom uh, spiritually of course me yeah so where we are you know we can say okay freedom from sin okay so all the consequences or effects of sin so where uh, we are not held bondage to sin but we are progressively you know um uh, being led freedom from fear freedom from any other consequence of sin so that's the uh, that's the first big part of it right so there is liberty freedom in our emotions it's not it's not freedom which says okay i'll i'll do whatever i want to do it's not that you know it's it's within the uh, boundaries of what god moral laws of god right moral expectations right um, so that that is one thing then the other thing is also the social issues issues also you know are uh, definitely impacted because of truth right um, you know if you were to ask how well because of uh, the truth being uh, shared uh, like uh, abolition of slave you know it happened in the in in the us and uh, you know racial discrimination um, you know again of uh, that the, the, where did that come from that that everybody is created equal and we need to love one another uh, equally irrespective of race irrespective of language culture etc um, and in our own country um, like um, and we know that rajara mohan rai was a uh, social reformer against sati and you know child marriage um, so he he did that but we we if you go and see that we uh, we also see william carey you know being uh, though he was not in the forefront but we see the they knew each other and you know uh, and so the uh, and pandit pandit ramabai and all these people so much of uh, 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 you know from the truth right from the word of god um, so uh, this whole movement gaining momentum because of truth of what it is right so yes it will affect culture as well now what you are talking about is persecution for the sake of truth right where there is um, uh, limiting of freedom of expression freedom of sharing the gospel uh, now that will always be there that will that is always going to be there uh, till jesus comes wherever you know wherever the truth is being proclaimed wherever one wants to live a godly life they will face ridicule they will face persecution you know that is going to be there uh, so that will be there yeah oh, yeah regarding the problem problem passage interpretation like now we have to the to from uh, corinthians 
regarding falls yeah but what about uh, the sandhya some they like uh, for example uh, regarding uh, death of judas mm in the uh, matthew uh, it was written that uh, he gave the money back he to the priest and uh, he hang himself mm -hmm. but in uh, acts it was uh, written that uh, he bought the land with that money and then uh, he burst out because of god's wrath mm -hmm. so how we can uh, interpret it those uh, okay we can use the same this template uh, but uh, maybe we can do that as an assignment okay <laughs> after we do the word study uh, we can we can do that you know let's let's uh, study it and discuss it no, not as a you know uh, we can just informally you know maybe if you have those both those passages you can post it on the stream and let's look at it let's study it yeah so it'll be interesting we can do that sure and uh, other places also right uh, where uh, king saul he was tormented by this spirit distressing distressing spirit from god so we have such things exceptions uh some of these answers we'll know only when we no no only when we reach <laughs> only when we reach yeah so some questions i think we can reserve it then um but yes uh, in timothy mm, so both put together and then yeah. yeah so uh, he uh, is it timothy or timothy right okay okay um oh yeah uh, yeah yeah second chapter yeah yeah let a woman learn in silence and all with all submission i think this is even more problematic right <laughs> yeah because earlier he's talking about uh, physical physical apparel you know like um wouldn't women adorn themselves verse 9 in modest apparel you know not with braided hair gold and and then he goes on to let a woman learn in silence etc so um, so Verse 11 is okay. Let a woman learn in silence, all submission. Verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Yeah, this is a. I think we can take this up. We can do this, and also uh, Judas. Uh, we can learn. That. Yeah. So, so the, the, here again, when we look at okay, this is Timothy, who was part of Paul's team, uh, ministry team, and who was ministering, etc. and um, yeah so this is paul writing to him instructing him so when we read through uh, all the epistles that paul has written the people who were with him who were ministering with him in his team um, people like uh, priscilla and then we read romans chapter 16 i think that's a great place to go last year we see so many women mentioned in, mentioned their apostles phoebe uh all these people so then you realize that he is is addressing something else here you know uh teaching uh again efficient chapter 4 is talking about fivefold ministry we know that it's not just for men of a mankind really so yeah if a, if a if a woman can be a teacher if a woman can be uh you know why not the other fivefold ministry gives so here he is saying you know i teach or have authority so what is he you know so we know that there's something else apart from this so we can't really apply and say uh, okay we'll we'll look at it <laughs> okay okay so we'll stop here thank you everyone online students god bless